we wish to commend all those who have and continue to ensure that people are rescued, bodies exhumed, bodies identified, and people reunited with their families. The agency team, led by the Ministry of Interior, has played a commendable role and we applaud their efforts. We particularly wish to appreciate civil society organizations and people of this community who played an important role of whistleblowing and continue to assist in resolution of the media of this matter. We also want to appreciate the media for highlighting this as we go along in trying to unravel this tragedy. The mandate of the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights is to promote and protect human rights of all Kenyans. In this regard, we wish to make the following statements. One, the Constitution provides that in the performance of activities, state or agencies should conduct themselves in a manner that is transparent and accountable to the people who are sovereign. Article 73 of the Constitution provides the responsibility on state agents and it invokes accountability that is envisaged to bring public confidence. Although the various agencies may have performed their duties with diligence, we note that they may have operated in a manner that does not elicit confidence. Of particular note are the restrictions on access to non-state actors such as CSOs, the media, and members of the surrounding community in the identification of graves, exhumation, and identification of bodies at autopsy. We wish to note that it is these same CSOs, members of the community, and the media that brought this issue to the fore. We, however, note improvement of this situation that allows, currently is allowing some access. And we encourage continuity to provide transparency and verification of what is happening on the ground and overcome misinformation. More can be done in providing and supplying platforms for access to information especially to families in tracing their loved ones, providing psychosocial amenities, and communicating the availability and feedback. Number two, it is saddening to observe that operations so far have focused on exhumation of the dead rather than rescue of the living. Reports that come to the commission suggest that there are many people who are still living in the forest and due to fear of arrest have retreated deeper into the forest. We recommend that there is a review of priority to focus on rescue of the living. In this regard, we call upon a strategy that facilitates saving the lives of the radicalized, indoctrinated persons still in the forest. These should involve allaying their fears that they will be treated as survivors and not suspects. Number three, Article 28 of the Constitution states that every person has inherent dignity that should be respected and protected. Indeed, Article 10 states that the dignity of all persons is a fundamental national value. To this end, we call upon all operations be conducted in a manner that will bring dignity to the deceased and to the families. Identification of all bodies should be non-negotiable. This will allow internment consistent with various religious and religious rights. This will also facilitate closure for the families. Article 43 
in point number four that we wish to raise, Article 43 states that every person has the right to the highest standards of health. The commission notes that the Shakahola tragedy has resulted in extensive psychological trauma. The mental well-being of many is at stake. These include persons rescued, family and friends of those who are missing or deceased, persons involved in the rescue, exhumation and identification, the surrounding community, and indeed all of us who are media audience and listeners. In this respect, we commend state and non-state actors who have provided some counseling and other psychosocial support and encourage continued and enhanced services. We urge all persons to continue applying the principle of do no harm in their interventions and reporting. Number five, Article 32 of the Constitution provides freedom of conscience, religion, and belief. We, however, note that this freedom does not extend to situations where the right to life is under threat. Fasting is a common feature encouraged by various religions, but we note that there is no religion that propagates this to the point of death. In addition, such religious practices such as fasting and other self-denial do not extend to children. We thereby call upon religious organizations, be they Christian, Muslim, Hindu or other, with one voice to condemn this practice of self-harm in the name of spirituality. This will help in de-radicalization of those that are radicalized and indoctrinated. We also call upon urgent investigation by the National Police Service through the DCI of reports that there may be other radicalized communities in other areas of the country such as the Vumbo Forest in Kwale County. Timely action will prevent similar tragedies. Number six, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights commends the use of technology in the operations at Shakahola. We know that technology makes work easy and efficient. We hereby encourage continued and enhanced use of various technologies, include DNA technology in identification of bodies, drone and other geographic information system, GIS technology, in mapping and identifying the settlements that are deep in the forest for the rescue of the persons therein. Number seven, we note that survivors of this tragedy are in hospitals and others are graciously hosted in various private rescue homes. We note that these persons who are domiciled in hospitals and in rescue homes may have information that is useful for resolution of this matter and may indeed act as witnesses. In this regard, we call upon the relevant government agencies to provide adequate security to ensure their safety and also the documentation of information that they have. Furthermore, we call upon all people of goodwill to support particularly the private institutions so that they have adequate resources to continue with their good work. The Constitution of Kenya in Article 53 and the Children's Act 2022 elaborate that the best interest of the child is the overall consideration in ensuring access to food, protection from negligence and cruel treatment, and the right to free and compulsory basic education. Our young generation is at threat. It is at risk. And all efforts must be put into effect so that we do not lose this young generation. Our future lies in this young generation. The kind of thing that we have seen in Shakahola involving children should never, ever happen again. We propose that there be initiation of proactive mechanisms and programs 
informal and informal learning spaces to ensure that this does not happen again. Number eight, and the last. There are many institutions involved in getting to the bottom of these tragedies. These include the police, Ngao, government pathologists, government chemists, the Senate, the national parliament, as well as newly appointed commission on inquiry, among others. We know that there is need for a coordinated approach to understand what really happened at Shakahola. Even better, a single agency endowed with the requisite skills and entrusted with such function would be ideal. This, we believe, is what was envisioned and provided for in the National Corona Service Act of 2017. The Shakahola tragedy brings to the fore the importance and urgency of the National Corona Service Act. We hereby call upon opera operationalization of this act. In conclusion, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights wishes to remind all that Article 26 of the Constitution of Kenya states that every person has the right to life. In this regard, it is the role of government to ensure the safety and security of all persons. This protection should be even against themselves in the preservation of life. Inarguably, the Shakohola tragedy has shown that there are gaps that led to the death of 145 persons to date and still counting. Inarguably, there has been failure of government to protect its citizens. In this regard, we call upon the mandated government agencies to identify persons in the security agencies, and I talk about persons, not institutions. Responsibility is borne by persons. We call upon identification of persons in security agencies, provincial administration, or other agencies under whose watch there were gaps of omission or commission leading to this tragedy. Kenyans expect that the planners and implementers of these heinous human rights abuses will be investigated and prosecuted without fear or favor. I once again emphasize that all persons, state or non-state actors, who may be complicit to allowing such heinous acts to happen must be brought to account. This will not only ensure justice is done, but also prevent similar tragedies in the future. Once again, we condole with those who have lost their loved ones in Shakahola and those whose loved ones are still missing. Thank you very much.